So today's gun is a PSR gun, and the guys at Upriver Precision are responsible for this complete build that I have here. This is a 6.5 Creedmoor. Mark and Jack did a phenomenal job putting this gun together, and all the vendors that, uh, that kind of participated in this, and the quality of this build is truly amazing. So a couple things I'll start off with. The barrel is done by International Barrels. It's a 20 inch. I wanted a 20 inch because where I'm at, 1200 yards and in, I'm good. So I really didn't wanna push a longer barrel. I know a lot of people will recommend at least a 22 or maybe even pushing a 24, but this is a match grade 20 inch MTU barrel cut. Later in the future, I'll probably build a clone to this and then have International Barrel send me something that's a little more tapered uh, to lighten up the gun. But right now I wanted the extra little bit of weight. The next thing that I'm going to talk about is the Atlas bipod. And one of the nice features about this is that you can take the legs, leave them in a traditional spot, or you can fold them back or fold them up forward. And I think those that shoot off a bench or terrain where you can't really dig in your, your bipod, this is a great feature to have to be able to get those legs in a forward position. And this thing is built and locked in really sturdy. There's a spindle down here that you can loosen or tighten and what that'll do is it'll give you that flexibility for shooting movers or changing your angle in the event that you had to go from one target array to another target array but you still needed stability it also when you loosen it dictates kind of that left or right end up can't that you might end up having to uh, deal with to level the gun or just a plain take a shot at a worst case scenario the chassis is done by Masterpiece Arms. This is your ESR uh, folder with a night vision bridge, primarily because where I'm at, I wanna be able to have a night vision capability on the gun. This is a side folder, which is one of the reasons why I also wanted a 20 inch barrel because I wanted something that was gonna be more packable for the terrain and for where I go uh, in, in my neck of the woods. So this was purpose built for me for what I like to do. There's a lot that goes into this stock a lot more than I think most people realize. You have your traditional wheels for cheek riser to go up uh, and down, and of course, length of pull to be extended. You have other accessories that can mount and lock in right here. You have a button that also locks and unlocks. And when I say locks, it locks it in a folding position, which I think is a big deal. This right here, you can see how beefy this is. So when this gun finally gets locked up, She's locked up. It's not going anywhere. You can already see the little level bubble right there. I think this is a great feature to have. I'm used to the ones on my scope. I don't know right now whether I'll put one on my scope or not. For right now, this one seems to be doing the job and, and surprisingly well. So nevertheless, it's a nice feature to have already built in uh, to the chassis system. When we look at this grip, a lot of people don't like it when you see it, but as soon as your hands get behind it, you really appreciate it. And most of us will shoot single-sided on the gun. So it has a nice little knurl and cutout exactly for that. The chassis has a cutout too. So the way this chassis is, is and the way your thumb comes in, it's very intuitive and it gives it that place that you really want your thumb to be, not to where it's just like hanging off on the side. It actually kind of has a home to go into. And I think that's a nice feature. The trigger that I'm using is a Geisley. It's a Super 700 two-stage. One of the nice things about it is you, as the user, can adjust it. You can make it to where it's lighter or heavier in a pull. You can also take it from a single stage and make it a two-stage or vice versa. I like to run it as a two-stage right now. I'm gonna give it a try, but later on, if I wanted to, I could switch it over. So I think both for uh, builders and for um, shooters, it's a nice, um, it's a nice, thing to have in the event that you change your mind. And we all know Geisley. Geisley makes great triggers. I've been running them for years upon years in the ARs, and I have nothing but great things to say, and I've seen a lot of other triggers fail out on the gun range, so Geisley does it right. You have <clears throat> Accurate Mag, which has, this one happens to be a 10 rounder. And one of the things that I like about the, the chassis system here is you can release the mag either with your left hand or you can release it with your right hand as well. It locks into position very well. It doesn't have a lot of wiggle room, which I'm used to on a lot of other uh, bolt guns. So I think uh, between the high cut, which allows you to get the mag out of the gun and the way they built this uh, chassis system, it's really locking everything in there together very nicely.
you have a flat spot all the way up to the most forward position and that's for other accessories that you could mount to a manfrotto so <clears throat> this isn't just something that got kind of thrown together and let's put some rails on it and have some adjustments in the back. You can tell that a lot of engineering and a lot of work went into this chassis system. So nevertheless, might be a great option uh, for you as shooters. QD cups on both the left and right hand side of the gun. So plenty of flexibility for you guys as shooters. The receiver is done by Ultimatum Precision and this is their deadline receiver. They did a really nice solid threw my logo on there, which was super cool. And what I'll tell you is I'm used to a lot of Remington 700s. And on a Remington 700, man, the throw is really um, far to get to. And not only that, but on this receiver right here, when you get it right about here, it wants to unlock and come back. So between the smoothness, smoothness of the action, and then not only that, but just the angle and the assist right here, uh, I think this is an amazing receiver, and the guys over there uh, at Ultimatum Precision have just done a phenomenal job in, in regards to this receiver. I'm used to a H59 or like a Tremor 3 reticle, so it's taken me a little bit of time to get used to this particular lure pole. It's a TMR. I've shot TMRs many years ago. I just haven't shot TMRs uh, recently. It's a 7 to 35 power, which is pretty surprising when you look at how big this scope is. I have 18 power scopes at home that are not this big, and Louisville always does a great job somehow putting an amazing amount of zoom into something that's so short and compact. It is a mill mill, which I really appreciate, locking turret up top. The windage knob is not locking, but I I don't dial my wind anyways. I like how they've put this line up here where it's a lot easier for you, the shooter, to see uh, when you're behind the gun. I think it's something so minute that it's, it's kind of surprising nobody else has done it a long time ago. So locking turret, this is a Mark V uh, HD scope, 7 to 35. It has a little knurl right here. And I know this is gonna sound kind of weird, but a lot of scope manufacturers, they're either too loose when you go to dial it, or they're too stiff, like so stiff that when you go to grab this thing, it completely takes you off target. Uh, this is dialed in really nice. It's smooth, but it maintains right where it needs to be. I know a lot of people are gonna comment on this. I have duct tape right here. There are manufacturers of other scopes that are even more expensive, and for whatever reason, they just don't have a lock and ocular piece. Mine, if they don't lock, I duct tape it. I don't wanna to have to worry about it. If this uh, uh, eyepiece rotates uh, to a certain degree, it's gonna change everything else that I've got going on. So for me, I just rock some duct tape around it. I really don't care. I do think it's kind of funny because you know there's a lot of work that goes into these scopes uh, and right at the last minute, you know, I gotta use duct tape. But nevertheless, uh, such a great scope to have. Overall, this is a really nice build uh, for my first 6.5. And like I said, I'll probably build a clone and lighten it up just a little bit. But for my first one, I wanted this thing a little stiff, a little bit heavier uh, for shooting, just so I can enjoy it. The groups that I'm already getting out of the gun are floating somewhere between a quarter to a half. I know that if a real professional got behind a gun, it would shoot tighter. I think I'm gonna have to measure it at um, 200 yards, primarily because I don't think most of these guns nowadays, I don't think you can evaluate them correctly at 100 yards. I think you have to take it out at distance a little bit further. The other thing is, I know I'm fighting a little bit of the reticle. I'm used to that line crossing another line on the bullseye. And right now, that TMR has got a little hole in it. So it's like, is that the X underneath the hole? And I know I'm chasing it just a little bit. Backing out may help or uh, just getting used to the scope in general. So this gun with the build that Upper River Precision did, I mean, and all the parts that have gone into it, this is a um, something to consider if you're looking at getting into the PSR world. The great thing about it is this, the, the industry, the industry has uh, so many different makes and models and everything else that are out there to fit your lifestyle. So if this stuff doesn't work for you, I guarantee there's another great product out there that will. So this is just a starting point for you to start doing some investigation of your own.